G'day there. You're watching the Aussie BIM Guru. Um, today I've actually got two videos on the channel. Um, this is just a quick technical demonstration of a product called Nonica Tab Pro for Revit. Um, I previously had a look at Nonica Tab in its free format um, whilst it was being developed, and now it's been really heavily refined and packaged up for use. I've been using it lately with my own business and it's saving me a lot of time for not much money. Um, currently it's quite cheap on the App Store, so definitely keep that in mind. It's very affordable compared to a lot of the alternatives and it's very easy to deploy. There's some great new features. Um, I wanted to use this video just to show you currently how the product looks and how it functions, just very briefly. And then in a separate video, I'll show you a toolbar that I've developed for you to use with Nonica as well. Um, that comes with a lot of scripts that I've built um, for your use. So it should um, save you hopefully a lot of time as well. Definitely saving me a lot of time. Anyway, without further ado, I'll just jump straight into a project and show you how Nonica works and some of the features that you can benefit from. So um, Nonica is available on the App Store in the Pro format. In this case, it offers a 30 day trial. Now I believe they do have a non-Pro version as well um, that won't contain a few of the features that I'm showing you here. Um, so they do have a free equivalent as well that I've already reviewed on the channel. So I'm going to be focusing mostly on the pro features um, that do set this apart. And it's mostly related to how many scripts you can support and how you can switch between toolbars as well. Um, but in this case, you can see the currently advertised price, which I think is quite reasonable um, per year for what this product may offer you in productivity level. Um, there are other options on the market, but I find this one for the features it provides is probably one of the most easy ones to use and deploy. Um, in this case, uh, what I've done already is installed Nonica, so you can see I have Nonica Tab Pro. And at the moment I have um, a, a toolbar installed. So if I go to this drop down on the end and go to settings, um, what I've already done is exported and imported um, a set of toolbars. So you can see that I've imported this set of tools. Now I don't just have 12 scripts, I actually have another 12 and I have another 12 again. So I can store any number of combinations of up to 36 scripts in three sub tabs at once. It's pretty powerful and pretty quick to switch between. I find it effectively does most things that I need for Dynamo. Um, the way that I build my scripts is I focus a lot more on user interface and message, message generation, um, which helps me uh, understand what the script has done and when it's finished. Um, let's just run a really basic script. Uh, this one just literally opens up a message and just talks about the package. But when I run it, Nonica for the first time opens Dynamo in the background um, and then runs the script silently without me seeing it in Dynamo. A little bit like Dynamo Player. Um, if I do run a script that has inputs available, um, it's going to give me the option of what to do with them first. So for example, um, I have a script here that will open and close doors in my model if they contain my door open and close parameters. So if I open up Swinger, it's actually generating an interface automatically using inputs it can find, just like Dynamo Player does. In this case, I'm picking a degree to open any doors that can open in the model. In this case, I'm saying 90 degrees, and I can see I've just went and opened all my doors, which is really handy if I'm running through Enscape. Um, I can also run it again um, and just say to close the doors. And you can see it's really quick and easy to run. I find sometimes you do need to um, run the script only once from the UI because if you run it a second time, sometimes it can crash. Usually if you're generating elements, I've noticed it can cause problems. I have let the team know um, and they're working on it now. So I'm confident that they'll figure out the cause and, and fix it as well. Um, I've, I've also got other utility scripts such as one called Warnamo, which isolates elements in a view, for example. Uh, really easy when you're navigating through a view looking for warning generating elements rather than having to hunt them down manually or through the really clunky warning tab you can just do it using Dynamo. As well as this I've got a great tool called Super Selector uh, and this is where I combine uh, the Dynamo script using data shapes with the value of opening it from the toolbar. Um, so in this case this is a data shapes user interface uh, but in this case let's say I just want to select walls. It's going to build up that pre-filtered selection through data, uh, data shapes nodes and I can finish my selection and I've just created a pre-filtered selection which is much easier than filtering down from a larger selection which can be quite slow to generate in a model. Um, so it lets you really take the best of Dynamo and almost package it like an app which I really like. Um, I've got other more complicated tools such as Revit um, that literally lets you just up revision sheets all at the same time. So I can add revisions to sheets and remove them. Um, so some of the scripts are things I've done on my channel before. Um, other fun little like utility scripts that I've got as well, it's not just all data. For example, maybe I want to put a floor in a room, so let's just delete this floor in the toilet. I can use my room to floor tool. 
This is a UI generated entirely by Nonica. And I can just select in this case the bathroom, pick my tile floor, make it a raised finish and run. And there we go. We now have a raised finish that's been offset by the thickness. Um, so I can really quickly go and generate floors in a model. Um, if I'm setting up, say, an interiors model, it could be a very time-saving tool for me. Um, and sometimes easier just to run it through here than Dynamo Player. I have a second tab as well, where I have uh, scripts that mostly relate to families. So when I'm dealing with family files, I can often just switch over to this set of tools instead. I try to keep the toolbars all separated by function. So the other ones are more suited to a project. These are more suited to family work. And I find that these can save me a lot of time. For example, um, if I just make a new family, it's going to automatically understand the document that I'm looking at in, um, in Nonica. But I'll just show you a set of four scripts that usually um, I'd have to run separately in Dynamo. So in this case, uh, what I have is a family with pretty much no parameters. Uh, it contains a lot of out-of-the-box data types that I don't really want. So what I do first of all, typically, uh, using Nonica, is I restyle which targets a file which replaces styles that match a particular name. So now a lot of the styles meet my own standard. Then I use uh, dstyle, which removes all styles without a specific prefix. So now it's only kept the ones that have my standard applied to them. And then after that, usually I parameter jam, which targets a set of parameters to add to my family. It'll tell me if there's any errors. Um, I'm building my script to give me these messages. And finally, I like to set the authoring data. So this will automatically label some of those parameters with formulas. And you can see now that my family is effectively built to my standard with my common parameters now available to work with. Um, so that process alone saves me so much time when I'm not dealing with my own standard families or family templates. Um, really handy. Um, as well as this, you can do just really powerful things such as deleting parameters in bulk by combining things like data shapes and the ORCID package with Nonica. And I can just build a, a, a data shapes UI and I can just strip out any custom parameters that, that weren't there to begin with. And we can see we just clean the family back out again. So really handy when I'm dealing with manufacturer content. But the point I guess I want to accentuate is that Nonica just puts all these tools at my fingertips. Um, it really saves me a lot of time and it lets me just package my scripts in a way that's more fun as well. Um, and it just, it's just great being able to store these scripts in a settings file somewhere. So you could store this on a server with all the source files. And what happens when you, when you set up the toolbar, Nonica actually creates a copy locally. So it's not running off a server. It's typically running from your C drive under Nonica or Nonica Pro. And you can see that it's stored inside the buttons with the script and the icon for each of these. Um, so it does still store the files locally so that it runs more quickly. Um, but in this case, you can store the definition for where these files are taken from. Um, in this case, using uh, your settings file instead. So it's a really, really great deployment strategy. I think it's great. It's not too complex. It's not too cloud dependent. Um, it's quite straightforward, actually. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's so simple that it's smart. I find a lot of the other solutions are a little bit too complicated, I think. Um, so this one's just a nice, simple implementation. I think that this is a really great addition and definitely warrants a pro version. And I know there's more features they're looking at in the future as well. I definitely recommend that you jump over to the the longer demonstration that I'm uploading today as well um, that will show you this toolbar that I've built in more detail and also show you how you can package a script for Nonica. Um, it's important to note that you really just build your script like you normally would now because your Dynamo player inputs become Nonica inputs. So you don't really have to change too much. I just find when you're running a script from the toolbar, you want to think a little bit more about user interface. So things like messages and UIs become more important. Um, you can do things like rely on users selecting objects instead. Um, that's a really nice change. Um, otherwise, it's great. Um, definitely try it out. And uh, hopefully you enjoy the toolbar as well. So I hope that this demonstration was helpful. And I definitely encourage you to go and check out my longer video where I show you how my toolbar works and also how you can build a script for Nonica um, in a little bit more detail than what I did here. Um, and also that might encourage you to try it out and check it out. It's definitely one of my favorite types of this tool. There's, there's other ones out there, uh, but this one to me is probably the easiest to manage and deploy uh, for the cost that it comes at. Um, I really like the multi-tab feature. I think that's really unique to the product. 
um, and I think it's definitely you know one of the, one of my favourite features about it. Um, I'm pretty happy because I guess I also recommended uh, that feature to them quite early on, and I'm glad to see that it's been implemented so well. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to myself or the team over at Nonica as well. Um, they're really receptive to feedback as well, so if you're using the product and you've got um, some suggestions or ideas, definitely let them know. Anyway, um, if you're not already following and subscribing to the channel, uh, feel free to do so. And I look forward to seeing you in future similar videos. Thanks. Take care. Bye.